Grade 6 Math number 9.10a, Solving Operations with Integers, Part 1. Order of Operations. So, we need to have this memorized and we need to know what it means. Order of Operations tells us what to do and in what order. We do parentheses or brackets first, then exponents, then we multiply, then divide, then add, then subtract. Subtraction is always last. And for the last 50 or 60 years or more, people have used, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to help them remember the order of PEMDAS. Okay? That's the order of operations. So we've learned how important it is to use the order of operations. There's rules for evaluating expressions. Expressions are equations that have a variable in them, remember? Well, when there's a combination of several operations like a plus, minus, multiply, divide, parentheses, bracket, the order of operations is going to help us out. When we see an equation, or an expression, I should say, like this one right here, it looks really confusing. Look at all this. A lot of mumbo-jumbo there, huh? Well, we know we have to do parentheses first, and we have to be inside the brackets. So we're going to ignore this guy for now. We're going to do the 4 times 2, which is 8, and the 7 times 1, which is 7, because that's multiplication, and we do that before we add. Well, because the addition is inside the brackets, we need to do this before we do this. So we're still inside the brackets. 8 plus 7 is 15. Well, now the problem comes down to 3x equals 15. So what's x? This is so easy. x is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So work inside the brackets. You multiply, then you add. You work outside the brackets and solve for x. Okay? Now, if you're still confused about the order of operations, I want you to go to grade 6 math number 1.4 the video and it's going to give you a refresher or it's going to tell you all about the order of operations and why it's important okay very good examples there all right so you might want to watch that one if you're still confused all right when it says to evaluate and you see a crazy long equation like this and i say equation because do you see any variables nope so it's not an expression it's an equation all right well when we see this what do we do we follow the order of operations Look, here's a multiplication, because that's what the dot means, and here's a multiplication. So we've got to do the multiplication first, all right? But we have to do parentheses before we do multiplication. So we're going to do this guy first, all right? Why would I do 5 times negative 2 first instead of the negative 2 plus the 6? Because you multiply first, all right? You may think, well, it's parentheses, so I can do parentheses with this guy. Ah, but that's addition. You have to multiply first. So because he's in parentheses, we're doing the 5 times negative 2 first, okay? Then we're going to do this guy because he's multiplication. So now to group them together, the similar operations, we've got this multiplication added to this multiplication, okay? So we're going to do the 5 times negative 2, which gives us negative 10, we're going to do the 3 times 4, which gets us 12. Now we've got 12 plus a negative 10 plus 6. Well, these are both addition. So what we do is we start on the left and go across. When you have two operations that are the same, then you start on the left and go across, okay? Because now we're at the end of PEMDAS. We're down to the, the add and subtract, right? All right, so when we have a 12 and we add a negative 10, do you remember how to do that? Do you remember what happens when we add unlike signs? We subtract the lesser one and take the sign of the greater one, okay? So we're going to subtract the lesser one. 10 from 12 leaves 2, and we're going to take the sign of the greater one. That's a positive, so it's a positive 2. All right, now we've got to finish it because there's a plus 6 at the end, okay? Positive 2 plus 6 is 8, so our answer is 8. Now, what if we put the parentheses in the wrong place? See where I put them? I put them around the multiplication and then around the multiplication. Okay, that's what we did first. What if I put the parentheses around the addition and then we had this parentheses here? Because we can put parentheses around the numbers to help us solve the problem, to see it clearer. But if we put them around the wrong place, look what happens. We'd end up with 4 plus 5 is 9, and then 9 times negative 2, that gives us negative 18. If we multiply that by 3, we get a negative 54. And if we add 6 to it, we get a negative 48. That's all wrong. 
that didn't follow the order of operations of doing multiplication first. What if we grouped these into parentheses? Well, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 5 is 17, and if we multiply that by a negative 2, we get a negative 34. When we add 6, we get a negative 28. Oh my gosh, this is getting so confusing. What if I grouped these into a parentheses instead? Now we have negative 2 plus 6, which gives us a positive 4. We multiply it to the 5, that gives us a 20. We add it to the 12. Now we have a positive 32. Oh my goodness. So, you want to group similar operations to each other. You don't want to group addition ones together using the order of operations. You would group the multiplication together, okay? You don't want to group this addition together when you've got a multiplication out here. Don't group them together at all. And you don't want to group these together. You know, if the parentheses are already there, that's one thing. But if you're adding parentheses to help yourself see the problem better, you don't group the two different operations like that. You group similar operations together, okay? So here, watch. So here's the same problem, okay? 3 times 4 plus 5 times the negative 2 plus 6. We group the multiplications together, and because it's parentheses, we do it first. We start on the left, and then we move across, okay? So it ends up being, because these are in parentheses, you don't put parentheses in parentheses usually. What you do is if it, something is in parentheses, that's when you use a bracket, okay? So if you're wondering why, why when do these boxy brackets come in, it's when you've already got parentheses inside of it and you're trying to really show the eye that there's, you know, another thing that's grouped together, all right? So now we start on the left and go across once we've grouped it and answered the multiplication, see? All right, look at this one. Think about the order of operations. What's the first thing we're going to do? We've got a parentheses there, but is that parentheses showing us an operation, or is it just keeping this negative 6 away from that negative sign? Well, there's parentheses, yes. There's no exponents, so we're going to skip the exponents step because there aren't any, okay? That would have been the second one. The next thing it does is say multiply. Well, there's no multiplication here, but there is multiplication here. So that means we've got to do negative 6 times negative 12. See? Because that's the multiplication. So we're going to ignore this. So we do the negative 6 times negative 12, and we get a positive 72 because they have like signs. Do you remember the rule? To multiply and divide integers, if there's like signs, it's positive, and if it's unlike signs, it's negative. Okay. Well... Negative and a negative makes a positive, okay? So now we have a positive 72, and we've got negative 4 minus 72. But remember, this is a positive 72. If it was a negative 72, it would have been negative 4 minus negative 72, see? So we are subtracting a positive. And what happens when you subtract unlike signs? You add the opposite, okay? So we're going to add the opposite. Instead of subtracting... A positive 72, what we're going to do is we're going to add a negative 72. So we're changing this to a positive sign, and then we're putting the 72 with a negative sign in front of it in parentheses. Okay? We flipped it. So now we've got negative 4 plus negative 72. Well, that's negative 76. See? We added the opposites. So it's very important that you group similar operations together so that you can see them and that you don't mistakenly group a multiplication with an addition. If it's already like that from the book, that's fine. But don't you do it to help yourself look at the equation or the expression, okay? So I'm going to continue on with the next video, and we're going to talk about how the commutative property and associative and distributive property can help us do this, okay? Remember that the absolute value is the distance away from zero. Remember that the additive inverse is the opposite number across 0 from itself, okay? So the additive inverse is ne of negative 4 is positive 4, because that's its opposite across 0, all right? Try to remember that. All right, we're going to go to the next video. Keep trying. I'll see you there. Bye.